Hello, and welcome to the first annual Calgary Black Achievement Awards. I'm your host, John Cornish, and I'm very much looking forward to ha having a great bunch of conversations tonight, listening uh, to many people's stories. You know, 2020 was a very difficult year, but Calgary is a resilient city. And, you know, we really show up for each other when times are hard. Tonight, you're going to hear stories of people who are beacons of light that we needed in the darkness. CIBC is our title sponsor, and I'd like to thank them for actually approaching us to partner for an event during Black History Month. We knew right away that this was a great opportunity for us to showcase Calgary's best and brightest. Tonight marks roughly a year of the Calgary Black Chamber's existence as an official society. We'll be holding our first annual general meeting soon, and if you aren't on our mailing list already, please sign up on our website, calgaryblackchambers.ca. Uh, you know, later on tonight, our, our Vice President will be talking about some of the accomplishments of the Calgary Black Chambers. You know, I, I think 2020 was, was huge for a new organization, but I know 2021 is going to be even better. And tonight, we're getting started with that. As we look to our, expand our programming, we're going to need more volunteers. The Calgary Black Chambers is fundamentally a volunteer-run organization. So if you want to help out, we are, would welcome your help. So uh, just a few housekeeping things. You know, in line with COVID procedures, as much as possible, we kept our physical distance. In fact, as much as possible, we let people record from their own homes to maintain safety. You know, we wanted to highlight our award uh, winners. So we had a videographer uh, that we never had contact with, and he was able to uh, go around and get their videos outside as much as possible. Our hashtag on social is CBAAYYC. So please join the conversation there. And in the future, uh, you know, we're going to look forward to having real housekeeping, uh, housekeeping items. Uh, like, you know, where you find your nearest washrooms and exits. But for now, let's just be happy that for the most part, we're safe inside uh, from the cold and the snow. So let's get started. You know, I'd like to introduce our first guest, Tim Fox. Uh, you know, Tim is the Vice President of Indigenous Relations and Equity Strategy with the Calgary Foundation where he works to strengthen and enhance the culture and practice at the Calgary Foundation while incorporating uh, the work of Truth and Reconciliation Council and equ uh, racial equity. You know, he's very much doing the same mission as we are. Uh, you know, he is a good friend who I met through the Calgary Foundation where we sit on a few committees together. And I'd like to pass it off to Tim for our land acknowledgement. Thanks for that introduction, John, and Oki Nistoni Taniko Naidu Saukasum. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Fox. I'm a proud member of the Blood Kana Nation. It's a community two hours south of Mokinsis for Calgary. It's also a part of the 60 Gates at the B, the Blackfoot Confederacy. Just wanted to uh, thank and congratulate John and his team on all the work of the Calgary Black Chambers. I'm truly humbled to be invited to help kick off today's celebrations in this way. In the work of Systems Change for Reconciliation that I'm a part of with Calgary Foundation, I'm reminded of a couple of elder teachings that I've received along the way, two of which I'd like to share with all of you today. The first one comes from an academic and elder in my community, Dr. Leroy Little Bear, who once said, every society in one way or another lays claim to a territory. Within that claim territory, a culture arises from the mutual relationship with the land it is through this mutual relationship with the land that cultural icons, symbols and images, values, customs, ceremonies, stories, songs and beliefs of the people are developed. These in turn are embodied into the very being of the people. And the second gem of wisdom I'd like to share comes from an elder and my relative, Beverly Hungry Wolf, who once said, this land has to be acknowledged. The people who took care of this land for a long time have to be acknowledged and at the very least find the truth about us. So it's with this spirit and intent that I am proud today to acknowledge the ancestral territories of the Six Gates at the B, the Blackfoot Confederacy, that includes the Kana, Siksuga, and Bikani First Nations, signatories to Treaty No. 7, the Sutina, and Iyahe Nakoda Nations that make up Bears Paw, Wesley, and Chiniki, the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, and then finally, 
acknowledging all of us who call this land home, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, that there is a collective responsibility we all hold into the work of reconciliation. So just uh, hoping that this inspires and uh, further motivates all of you to think about land acknowledgements in a different way and to understand that they should go beyond reading off of scripts and they should go beyond getting the pronunciation of community names right and that we have the opportunity to strengthen our relationship with one another. So congratulations to all of the award recipients. I know that we collectively wish we could all be together face to face and that time will come. But until then, just wishing you all uh, health, safety and well-being in the days ahead. And once again, just thanking John and his team for including me and my words into uh, the kickoff to this amazing celebration. Thank you all and looking forward to our continued learning and growth with and alongside one another. Take care. Thanks, Tim. You know, Tim has been a good friend, like I said, and, and he, he, he recognizes something that's super important. You know, the, the work they're doing towards reconciliation and, and equity, the same kind of thing we're trying to do. You know, next we're going to have our Canadian National Anthem. You know, we are all Canadians here. And I, I'd like to introduce Justine Tyrell. You know, I, she is somebody I always look forward to seeing because she means it's the start of a football game. You know, D Justine Tyrell always sang at the Calgary Stampeder games. But you can also find her on uh, Stingray Music. You know, she's been featured on uh, CBC. And she was actually a multiple award winner at the old uh, Obsidian uh, Awards. Um, you know, I, I would definitely check out her latest single, Worthy. Now, Justine, over to you to sing the national anthem. Thank you, John. And congratulations to all of tonight's nominees and recipients. Each of you represent the absolute definition of excellence. It is my honor to sing tonight our Canadian national anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see they rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Stand on guard for thee. Beautiful, Justine. Thank you so much. I'm very excited and very hopeful for Calgary St. Peter's games to kick back on this season. Next up, we have Nehed Nenshi. You know, actually, the first place I met him was at the Calgary St. Peter's game where he introduced me as Mayor John Cornish. You know, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but, uh, you know, all I know is Nahed has been a great friend, very supportive of me and my journey, and I know uh, he cares a lot about Calgarians. So, Nahed, over to you. Hello, this is Mayor Nahed Nenshi, welcoming you to Black History Month, welcoming you to the Black Achievement Awards. Let me first express my gratitude on behalf of the citizens of Calgary to the Calgary Black Chambers for bringing people together across the diaspora, for fellowship, for networking, and also for celebration of the achievements of Black Calgarians. You know, this year Black History Month is taking on a special meaning for me and for so many. In a year of Black Lives Matter, in a year where we have really confronted our need as a community to go from being pluralistic and diverse to being truly anti-racist. This month gives us an opportunity to reflect, 
It gives us an opportunity to think about the contributions of Black Canadians to our community throughout our past. But also, it shouldn't just be somber and sad. Let's celebrate what we've achieved. Let's celebrate what we've achieved together and let's celebrate the incredibly bright future we have now that we understand that all lives cannot matter until black lives matter. Now that we understand the path we're on, we don't know the destination. We don't even know exactly where we're going, but we're going on that path towards anti-racism together. So congratulations to all of the nominees, congratulations to the winners tonight, and congratulations to the Calgary Black Chambers for bringing us all together. Next, we have a word from our title sponsors, CIBC. Hi, everyone. My name is Solomon J, Community General Manager at CIBC here in Calgary. I'm happy to welcome you all to the Calgary Black Achievement Awards of 2021. I'm particularly proud of working with the Calgary Black Chambers on this inaugural event as we aim to celebrate the Black achievements across our city from all walks of life. Listen, 2020 has been a really tough year from issues around the COVID pandemic to events that have led to more awareness being raised around the Black struggles across the globe, as well as here in our city. And this is why the need to celebrate the Black achievement across our city has never been more important. And I'm proud to be part of an organization that's working with the Calgary Black Chambers to support in this initiative. And I'd like to introduce you all to our senior vice president here at Calgary, Mr. Perry Hamler, our Calgary Region Senior Vice President, as well as Mr. Sean Hawkins, our market leader here in Calgary. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Pierre Hummel. I'm the Senior Vice President for Central Canada at CIBC. I'm proud to say a few words about the importance of empowering the Black community. It is really a critical step in building diversity, which is certainly about fairness and equality, but it's also about opportunity. There are a few things in our world that continue to grow and thrive without diversity. Whether it's the strength and stability of a rainforest thriving with biodiversity or the strength and stability of the corporate world empowering the black community, diversity does and will create opportunity. As we strive for fairness and inclusion, which are simply the right things to do, we will all benefit as we focus on empowering the black community. Hi everyone participating virtually and to all the members of the Calgary Black Chambers, thank you for this opportunity to sponsor the Black Achievement Awards and a big congratulations to all of the winners. Black History Month is a time to honor the achievements, contributions and legacy of leaders and change makers from black communities across Canada and around the world. At CIBC, diversity and inclusion is a cornerstone of our bank. It helps us be more connected to the unique needs and values of our clients and communities it also ensures that we're casting as wide a net as possible to find the absolute best people to join the team. I'm very happy to work with a great group of black employees in our market who are passionate about creating opportunities for others and empowering the black community within CIBC and across the community. Internally, they do that through initiatives like our Black Employee Network and externally through our sponsorship of events like this one. I'm proud of the steps we're taking at CIBC to build a workforce that reflects the clients and communities we serve and of our ongoing efforts to combat anti-Black racism and other forms of systemic racism. Black History Month provides an opportunity for all of us to reflect on the past, to try and build a more inclusive future. Congratulations again to all the winners, and I look forward to the day when we can actually do this in person and not virtually. Thank you. Many thanks to Solomon and the CIBC group. You know, I, unfortunately, I, I'm in a place where, you know, we're trying to start up a new, a new group. Um, and then Solomon comes along and, and wants to get this event going. And all of a sudden, we have the support of a, of a massive institution that, that really uh, puts diversity at their core. You know, those kinds of things are what you need to get a nonprofit off the ground. So many thanks to CIBC for supporting this event for coming to us with this event and and uh, many uh, thanks to Solomon and the work that he's doing empowering diversity at CIBC. So next up we have Chi Ilya Ndui. Um, Chi was actually the first 
uh, member other than myself and, the wa- and my wife of the Calgary Black Chambers. Yeah, no, she's been pivotal in getting things done with the Chambers as her firm, Norton Rose Fulbright, did a lot of the heavy lifting to get us registered as a society. Many thanks to Chi and the Norton Rose Fulbright for the work that they've done. Now, Chi, over to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Chi Ilian Dule. I'm a lawyer in the Calgary office of Norton Rose Fulbright, and I'm also the vice president of the Calgary Black Chambers. I'm just going to be talking to you about the Calgary Black Chambers and what we stand for. So for those who don't know, the Calgary Black Chambers is a society made up of Black professionals and entrepreneurs who saw a need to provide support to our community, particularly as students and young professionals. We started to meet up in the fall of 2019 at the Petroleum Club, pretty much by word of mouth. And now we have over 300 individuals on our mailing list. Our objectives include to provide scholarship and mentorship to students, to provide fellowship, a safe space for professionals to express themselves, and to advocate for our community to make Calgary a better and safer place for Black people to live. And since our incorporation in January of last year, the board and our members have been really busy. I'm going to highlight a few of our achievements just because I believe that action speaks louder than words. First, when COVID hit last year, we quickly realized that international students were not provided with any relief. And so we hit our members up for some money and our members came through as they always do. And we provided financial assistance to 18 international students. On the scholarship side, we've been able to raise $35,000, which will go to deserving black students starting the fall of this year. I wanna use the opportunity to say thank you to our members and to our sponsors, KPMG and the Alberta Teachers Association. Also, our mentorship program kicked off last year with Father Lacombe High School. And at the moment, we have over 30 kids in the program and it's been going great. We're also working on a partnership with the Calgary Emergency Anti-Racism Working Group. And the goal is to tackle and address discrimination against people of color in the healthcare system. We've also partnered with a number of organizations, including RBC, Calgary Foundation, who are providing assistance with our scholarship fund and Immigration Service Calgary. We have a working relationship with them and they've provided us with at least six internship positions for black individuals annually. And this will provide these individuals with practical professional experience and a foot in the door in corporate Canada. Finally, before I go, I just wanna talk about our speaker series. So every month, the Calgary Black Chambers hosts distinguished speakers to provide our members an opportunity to learn and to be inspired. And in the, in the past, a few of the speakers we've had include Minister Madhu, the first Black Minister of Justice in Canada, and the former Olympian, Donovan Bailey. And so our plan is to continue to host this event, to continue to inspire and to teach our members. So before I go, I just want to use this opportunity to say thank you and well done to our members and to my fellow board members. We also want to say thank you to our sponsors and to our partners. We couldn't have done this without you. So thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the show. Awesome, Chi. Uh, Thanks for the introduction to the Calgary Black Chambers. You know, our mentorship program with Father Lacombe, I think it's going great. We we offer them soft skills, um, which is an eight-course series on, you know, going through things like teamwork, communication skills, uh, critical thinking and problem solving as well as uh, partnering them directly with a mentor. We actually have an excess of mentors right now as we seek to expand our, our mentorship offerings in the next school year. So thank you very much, Chi. Uh, we're looking on forward to doing many big things. Um, and actually, you know, Chi mentioned our speaker series. Our next guest is one of our most recent uh, speaker series uh, speakers, uh, Casey Madu, the Honorable Casey Madu, um, you know, one of um, you know, our, the highest ranking politicians in the province. Uh, Casey came and, and shared on the work that he's doing uh, to, to sort of you know, break down uh, some of the systemic, uh, systemically racist features of, of the current, um, you know, sort of the way the laws are set up. You know, uh, Casey uh, has worked with the, the highest levels of government to get things done. He's a distinguished gentleman and a friend to the Calgary Black Chambers. So many thanks for your, uh, what you're doing, Casey. Over to you. Hello, my name is Casey Madu. I am the MLF Edmonton Southwest and the Minister of Justice and Solicitor General for our province. I want to congratulate the Calgary Black Chambers 
for their inaugural Kagre Black Achievement Award that I understand will be taking place on February 6th, 2021. You know, friends, the Kagre Black Chambers have been doing an amazing work in our communities in Kagre. I do want to congratulate and thank the Board of Directors for coming forward with this award. It is, at the same time, very uh, gratifying that this award is taking place in the month of February that we get to celebrate the place, the history and achievement of Black Albertans, not just in Calgary, but in our province and across our country. I do want to thank all of the recipients and the nominees of this award for their hard work in qualifying for this award. I understand that this award will be given in various categories. We have the Art, Media and Entertainment Award. We've got the Business and Entrepreneurship Award. We've got Community Services Award, Awards in Education, in Law, in Medicine, Sports and Athletics, as well as a Lifetime Service Award. Once again, I do want to acknowledge and congratulate all of the award nominees. On behalf of our province, I want to congratulate you and thank the Calgary Black Chambers for putting forward this award. Calgary is an important city in our province. It is one of the economic hub of our province and Black Albertans, Black Calgarians have helped ensure the success and prosperity of Calgary and of our province. I thank you once again and happy celebration. Awesome, Casey. Thank you so much for those words. You know, Casey did a great job introducing our categories. So, like, how about we get right to it? I know everybody's here to see who won what award. You know, I, I wanted to hand out some awards. I, I shouldn't say hand. We're going to mail all the trophies with very COVID-sensitive procedures. But uh, our first presenter, Michael Lee Hing, is a good friend. You know, uh, Mike was actually one of the first people I spoke to about the idea of the Calgary Black Chambers. Uh, as Director of Finance and our Scholarship Board Chair, Mike is taking a lead role at the Calgary Black Chambers. He's a prestigious worker, uh, but most importantly, he's a person who cares deeply about his friends and family. He's always concerned about their well-being, and I know if I'm ever feeling down, Mike is going to give me a call in the next five minutes. So Mike, uh, thank you very much. Over to you. Hi, I'm Michael Lee Hing. I'm the Director of Finance for the Calgary Black Chambers. In my day job, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Accelerate Financial Technologies. The Calgary Black Chambers Education Achievement Award brings light to people who are helping the next generation. Education is at the heart of what the Calgary Black Chambers is. And people in this area need to be uplifted and supported to enable the next generation to reach their greatest dreams. The award goes to people making a positive impact in the lives of our students and youth in Calgary. Our two nominees are Randy Kwanzaa and Matthew Sauer. Randy has created an educational series for children Cujo's Kids Zone, with over 30 episodes, he has added much needed diversity to Canadian children's programming. He has gone beyond the typical early learning to skillfully cover social justice issues and has been featured on CIFF, appeared on Global, CTV, Breakfast Television, and CBC. He was also named by the Herald as one of 20 most compelling Calgarians. Matthew, has been coaching and teaching for 20 years, empowering, encouraging, and helping students see and reach their potential. His students say, quote, he puts so much effort into kids, way more than the other teachers. It makes you want to reach where he sees you. Matthew continues to run fundraising initiatives and is a mentor and role model for BIPOC youth. And I'm very pleased to announce the winner is Randy Kwanzaa. My name is Randy Kwanza, and I am the host and co-founder of Cujo's Kid Zone. And Cujo's Kid Zone is a show for children that is geared for children between the ages of four and 10 years of age. 
and it uh, focuses on science and STEM and also covers social justice issues as well. I look at my own childhood and I've seen that the lack of representation, right? So there was nobody that looked like me, right? You know, there's something about when you see somebody that looks like you, you can identify with that person. You know, there's a commonality. Adults have different biases and they're corrupted and it's hard to change the mindset of an adult. But with children, it's a clean slate, okay? And they're receptive to learning. My goal was to reach children and for them to learn while they still have the curiosity because when they get older, it's finished, it's over, right? And we've seen how the world is now in this day and age, what happens when children are not exposed to people of different cultures and different perspectives. They grow up to be adults that are very jaded, that are very extremely hurt, and that don't have the ability of empathizing with other people. This is the reason why I wanted to get them young. I said, when you get to an adult, it's too late. If we get them young, we can create the ambassadors of tomorrow. If you have an idea on something, you have a dream about something that you wanna do, there's gonna be a lot of people that will tell you what you can and you can't do, right? And it's, you know, it sounds so cliche, but it's, it's so true. The thing is, is that right now, it's the winter season and everybody sees winter. I don't see winter, I see spring, I see summertime. That's how I have my mentality towards my vision. I'm seeing a different season that hasn't yet happened and you have to be patient within yourself and also be encouraged that the harvest hasn't yet happened but you're seeing it way ahead of everybody else and that's why people don't understand and get it and they'll try to discourage you. We just finished producing uh, an episode for Black History Month and it was released actually today. And then we have another follow-up episode on the 15th of February, which is gonna be a reading. It's gonna be uh, Trailblazers, Black Canadians that have shaped Canada. So we're gonna do a book reading and the focus right now is of course Black History Month being how it is February. I think um, my key trait is my I guess my energy, my, my energy and my relatability. I'm, I have an easygoing kind of personality, but at the same time when I'm passionate about something, you know what, it, I take it back, my passion. I'm passionate about what I do. And anybody that sees me on the videos or anybody that comes across me in person knows that I wholeheartedly believe in what I'm doing and it's contagious and it, and it spreads and makes people wanna watch more of the episodes and, um, makes people want to interact and, and collaborate with me. Um, so it's, I guess it's my passion and my energy. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Until then, I'm gonna ask you to be kind, to be brave, and to be curious. But most importantly, is to be yourself. Bye for now. Amazing. Congratulations, Randy. Much appreciated. Uh, you know, the work and videos that you've done, my wife actually likes to watch them now. So it's awesome. You know, he, you, you made reference to one thing. Um, you know, the idea that we need representation from, from heroes that sort of look like us. I know for me, uh, winning the Blue Mars Trophy, uh, that was because Donovan Bailey had previously won it. You know, looking up to him. We, we were actually lucky enough to have Donovan Bailey on as one of our speaker series guests. So it's, it's awesome to have people to look, look up to. Randy, keep on doing the great work. Our next uh, category is the legal category with our presenter, Sarah Coder. Now, she is a uh, partner at Bow River Law as she recently went off on her own. She was formerly the managing partner at a large law firm in Calgary, a super hard worker, um, and she knows how to get stuff done. And we very much look forward to uh, her contributions at the Calgary Black Chambers. Uh, Sarah, over to you. Hello, my name is Sarah Coderre, and I'm an employment and labor law lawyer in Calgary, Alberta. I've practiced in this area for many years, and I'm excited to be starting a new chapter in which I've created my own law firm called Bow River Law, LLP. I am delighted to present the Calgary Black Chambers Law Award today. The Calgary Black Chambers Law Award exists to bring light to the work of Black legal professionals in Calgary. The work that legal professionals do is important 
because it has the ability to create lasting change in our community and to ensure that the rights of Black Calgarians and Albertans are advanced and are heard. This award is being presented today to an individual who's working in the legal field, who's made an impact on the legal community and has made Calgary and Alberta a better place for Black people to live. There are four nominees in this category. The first nominee is Keisha Holloman Sawson. Keisha is the president of the Black Law Students Association at the University of Calgary, and she was instrumental in bringing about the calls for action this June in response to the Black Lives Matter protests that were happening globally. As part of the calls to action, there was the introduction of the Black Students Admissions Process at the University of Calgary. This process has been designed to encourage more enrollment by Black, Indigenous, and other people of colour in the Graduate Law Program at the University of Calgary. The second nominee is Kenne Ilotonu. Kenne is an exemplary employee at Parkland Corporation who has set an example and demonstrated leadership not only as part of Parkland's legal team, but also as a founding council member of the company's International Diversity and Inclusion Council. Kenny was recently appointed as a bencher for the Law Society of Alberta, becoming the first ever Black bencher in the Law Society of Alberta's history. In addition to his work at Parkland and at the Law Society of Alberta, Kenny donates his time as part of the Provincial Court of Alberta's Civil Claims Duty Council project with the Canadian Bar Association and also as part of Global Lawyers of Canada. Our next nominee is Ryan Leachy. Ryan offers legal support to those in need in the community and provides mentorship and advice to aspiring Black entrepreneurs in the community. He has been an instructor in negotiation skills in state's professional leadership program and corporate training, and he is dedicated to ethical problem solving. His counsel is well respected by many executives in Alberta, and he has played a role in the setup and risk management of several First Nations joint ventures. I also have the privilege and honor of growing up with Ryan in Fort McMurray, Alberta. And I can speak to his incredible integrity, sense of humor, and the passion that he brings to his legal career. The fourth nominee is Charles Osuji. Charles Osuji is the founder and CEO of Osuji Smith Law, which is a thriving and fast rising small law firm in Calgary. At Osuji Smith, Charles ensures that his clients benefit from both a multi-generational and multicultural perspective by hiring diverse employees. At an age when most Calgary lawyers are busy learning their craft, Charles is doing that and also ensuring that he's providing mentoring and leadership for his staff of clerks, legal assistants, articling assistants, and associate lawyers. I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the Calgary Black Chambers Law Award is Kenne Ilochanmu. My name is Kenne Ilochan. I'm a legal counsel at Parkland Corporation, one of the biggest downstream um, retailers in the country. And I am seconded to Elbow River Marketing as a legal counsel. And I do mostly um, contracts, procurement for hydrocarbons. I really love to mentor and I, I love to give back to the community and um, my mentorship is um, about helping lawyers, future lawyers to succeed in Calgary. So since I came to Canada, to Alberta and to Calgary, I became a lawyer. I've realized that it is hard sometimes for lawyers coming out of the uh, from outside the country to succeed in this province, in this city. So a lot of my passion is about mentoring um, lawyers to succeed. So as a bencher, really, um, the bencher table is supposed to work for the good of the profession and the good of the public. So I cannot really have campaign promises. Or be it as it may, I think we require good governance at the bencher table. Also, we require technological innovation and practice innovation to take the legal profession into the 21st century and forward. Everything else is moving right now and the legal profession has to catch up. Black people actually thrive in a lot of industries, in a lot of human endeavors. We are 
we, we naturally thrive, we naturally, we naturally do well. So for the legal profession, I think I would say black people should continue to do what they do, continue to progress, continue to knock down walls, continue to knock down doors to do better. Because if we do not present ourselves, if we are not there, we will not get the opportunity. So really what I would say is for us to just make sure we are always available to take the opportunity with both hands. When I started the campaign to be elected venture, I was not sure at all that I was going to be elected. People had run in the past, people, black people had run and they didn't make it, but I, I just wanted to run with, and I had a message, I had a message to the entire profession, and I think my message resonated with people. So to answer the question, I definitely was not sure I was going to win, but when I won, that was one of the greatest feelings in the whole world. Amazing. Uh, you know, so many great nominees in that category. And, you know, Kenny, you know, being elected the first black venture in Alberta is a monumental landmark. You, you know, congratulations to you. You know, I'm, I'm proud that, uh, you, you know, we've gotten to know each other. Uh, you know, I always respect your, your, your critiques, your, your legal eye. Uh, congratulations on that. And congratulations to the rest of our nominees in the legal category. You know, we have a lot of black lawyers here in town. Uh, I would, uh, you know, strongly advise you to go give them a chance if you're looking for advice legally. Now, our, our next presenter is Brian Lanier. Now, he is a good friend and a, a person I've gotten to know through our work together on the advocacy committee for the Calgary Black Chambers. Uh, Brian is a, uh, you know, he's played a key role in developing our objectives, leaning on his uh, experience as an ex executive coach, helping us plan out our future. Brian is uh, the CEO of his own company, and I'm very much, uh, yeah, so Brian is a, uh, the thing that Brian does is he, he brings a very educated mind to every problem that we have. I, I very much look forward to seeing who wins in our STEM category. Brian, over to you. Hi, my name is Brian Lanier. I'm the president of the Leader Circle. We consult leaders in implementing pragmatic approaches to creating inclusive and diverse business environments. The Calgary Black Chambers STEM Award recognizes individuals who are making a profound difference in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, more than ever, our community has an opportunity to celebrate the achievements and amplify the voices of the too few Black people in our community that have dedicated their lives to the pursuit of breakthroughs in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. With that said, we are proud to announce that this year's STEM Award winner focuses her research on the treatment and health outcomes in children and youth with pediatric rheumatic diseases at Alberta's Children's Hospital Research Institute. More specifically, her research is in the assessment of health-related quality of life in patients with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, also known as JIA. She utilizes cutting edge technology to facilitate self-management skills for youth with this type of chronic arthritis. Scores of young people in our community, most under the age of eight years old, have directly benefited from her work. So please join me in acknowledging the recipient of the 2021 Calgary Black Achievement Award in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Congratulations, Nicole Johnson. My name's Nicole Johnson. I'm a pediatric rheumatologist at the Alberta Children's Hospital. I think it starts from childhood. I have a very large extended family and they're very supportive. Um, I have trailblazers within the family, especially the female role models, my aunts, my mom. Um, 
and a very close, immediate family who were very supportive and always believed that you could do whatever you wanted to do. And in my day-to-day -day now in Calgary, my husband's a pillar of strength and my entire extended family uh, are far away. So my new family in Calgary are very supportive and my students and my patients are my inspiration every day. You know, science is exciting. Um, we have to um, build them up from when they're young. I tell them to dream big from a young age. Even if you don't have a supportive family like myself to bring you strength, you can find it from within. So if you believe in yourself, there'll be no obstacles that would stop you. We have to teach them early that there's science in our everyday, show them examples in daily life. Um, we have to uh, believe that they can do what they want to do and tell them that it's a career that can bring them independence and financial success and personal success. On a day-to-day, -day, I work on building up my patients, teaching them advocacy for their own health care. Um, in teaching, we're working with university, uh, members of the equity and diversity team, the Black Physicians of Alberta, um, and med Black medical students, along with just community support to enhance Blacks in medicine, number one, but just in general, working on changing Black leadership in academia so that we can elevate the Black population. And once we do that, we help the whole society. We're building our pool of talent. Within my pediatric rheumatology world, we've uh, built stronger patients who are doing better with their health. We have looked at how to enhance public knowledge of rheumatology, so I've done a lot of advocacy work around that. Um, when it comes to the individual patients is building their future, I spend a lot of energy asking them who they want to be so that they see themselves outside of their illness. Um, from an educational perspective, I believe that I bring a different light, a different energy. I bring a different role model for Blacks and visible minorities and within that elevate the learning so we have more empathetic physicians who can handle the dealing with visible minorities. Um, and in life, just building friends, building people. Amazing. You know, uh, Nicole is a, you know, she's a person that changes lives. I, I, I volunteered quite a bit at the Alberta Children's Hospital and, you, you know, rheumatoid arthritis is one of those illnesses that can get you at any age. I actually had the player buddy who, who came down with it. And, you know, it was because of the work that they're doing here in Calgary that he was able to recover and play during the season. So, you know, all, all the best to our, our STEM nominees. I would actually say that, you know, the STEM category, we had the fewest nominations. It's definitely a place where we're working very hard as the Calgary Black Chambers to partner with different organizations to make sure that we're getting more black kids into STEM programs. Next up, we have Wazo. Wazo Africa and Dance Theatre is an award-winning performance arts organization based here in Calgary. Founded in 2006, the Wazo Africa means welcome to the land of perfection. Now, like, uh, you know, they want to preserve the purity of the and principles of African culture. And they're doing a great job here. You know, I, I got to give a shout out to their leader, Wumi Duwo, who has been dancing since the age of three. You know, Unganisha is a program that she's developed and it's the Swahili word for connection. And it, it originated from their desire to invite all to share, learn and connect to the beauty and diversity of African arts and culture. Uh, the upcoming next week, uh, they have the Unganisha spotlight on some of the best dance performers in Calgary, some of the best choreographers with a digital spectacle, uh, educating audiences on some of the lesser known forms of tap, jazz, hip hop, Samba, uh, Step, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Cuban, and Salsa to celebrate their beginnings and their contemporary popularity and the intermingling of artistic traditions that inspire communities to connect people across cultures and continents. You know, actually, later out in the month as well, Unganisha will be premiering a script reading of Maybe on February 27th. I would encourage you all to go check out their website and, uh, you know, they, they uh, are doing all the great things. Here is a presentation from Wozo Africa that took place this summer. Over to you.
hype right now yeah uh, thank you very much Wazo. uh that was awesome you know very much uh, looking forward to the rest of the stuff you're doing the, the, during black history month hey it's gonna be awesome now our next award category is our community service category uh oh actually it's our business and entrepreneurship category i was getting ahead of myself there so we have warren libert scott presenting he is the chair of our advocacy committee warren is you know He's a guy I've known for a number of years. I think we actually linked up originally on LinkedIn and we've actually preserved a friendship. And I know one of my favorite things to do with Warren, actually, you know, I guess this is almost the good old days, my head down to highs and enjoy a nice little, uh, you know, drink together. You know, we all miss those days, uh, but luckily enough, Warren and I have been able to stay together uh, online via Zoom on a weekly basis. So Warren, uh, you know, very much appreciate the work that you do. Uh, over to you. Hi, I'm Warren Libert Scott. I'm a corporate real estate agent at Jones Lang LaSalle here in Calgary. I'm also the chair of the advocacy committee at the Calgary Black Chamber Society. 
Today, I'm here to present the Calgary Black Chamber Society first Black Achievement Award in the category of Business and Entrepreneurship. This award goes to the person whose business endeavors, both their own and within a larger entity, help to move the needle in terms of Black leadership in our economy. The award goes to a person or a business whose work not only helps to improve the business, but also helps to uplift the people around them. They're working hard to make Calgary a great place to work. There are four, nomina four nominees in this category. Curtis Alexander is our first nominee. Curtis is a general manager of the flagship operation of Cactus Club on Stephen Ave. Curtis has been working hard to foster diversity in his field of hospitality. He has earned the respect of his peers and his teammates for providing mentorship and seminars and training and going well above the call of duty as a general manager. Great job, Curtis, and we love Cactus Club. Our second nominee is Salem and Anwar at Yegna Ethiopian Restaurant. Yegna Ethiopian Restaurant is a local family-owned business that serves wonderful African dishes. During COVID, Salem and Anwar mobilized with the help of local community organizers to provide meals and delivery services for people in need during the crisis. A wonderful example of community service. Our third nominee is Nathaniel Asifa. Nathaniel has been working in financial services for the past eight years and has achieved top producer during that time. In 2020, Nathaniel decided to go on his own and start his own firm, Eau Claire Partners Inc. at the age of 31. A bold entrepreneurial move, Nathaniel, and we wish you all the best. Our fourth and final nominee is Daniel Iguba. Daniel is a branch manager and insurance broker at Costin Insurance. Daniel has been recognized as a very important part of the Erythian and Ethiopian community for, for providing important financial information in their preferred language. Another excellent example of community service. There has been a wonderful amount of submissions and wonderful nominees. And all the nominees and the people that took their time to nominate people in their community should be proud to be participating in this event. I'm proud to present the winner of Calgary Black Chamber's first Black Achievement Award in a category of Business and Entrepreneurship. And the winner is Yegna Ethiopian Restaurant. Congratulations to Salem and Anwar, and thank you very much for your enduring community service. My name is Salam Shwangza. My partner name is Anwar Sultan. Uh, we are the owner of Yegna Ethiopian Restaurant uh, in Calgary, Alberta. My both uh, grandparents have uh, a big hotels in Ethiopia. So I guess I got that the recipes in the business in me. Um, no one in their children <laughs> doesn't have this, but I think I had it since I was a child. Um, and then when we, after I moved back to from, uh, from Ethiopia to Toronto and from Toronto to Calgary, Calgary become a home for us. So um, I used to work in the city of Calgary for uh, a few years and then Calgary Police Services and then um, I was like you know what I need to I need to find my uh, my uh, my callings you know I always wanted to have my own business and um, but we used to work in the community and then I think that helped us really well to to build our business through the community for sure before we become business owners in Calgary we used to work in the community uh, voluntarily uh, helping individuals, newcomers, uh, for this to settle here, and because we feel like this is how we wanted to pay for uh, coming from as an immigrant from Ethiopia. Canada has been really, really good to us, and then we always wanted, we always look forward to opportunity to help to pay that to Canadians, uh, to this great nation. We wanted to be part of this amazing nation, so we wanted to contribute always. That's what happens during COVID pandemic time. Uh, that's why we were inspired to do a lot of donations. For example, we used to donate 150 mil a day. And as a black business owned person, um, I think we showed we, we're not here only to receive, but we're here even to give. 
because we receive a lot of help and a lot of opportunity from Canada for sure. There's always a doubt, right? You don't know. This is our first experience of having a business. It's good to bring that diverse uh, because Calgary is very diverse and now it's becoming more metropolitan kind of city. So we can put our a little like, you know, cultural restaurant and we'll see how it's going to end. And then the turnout was amazing. It's so hard to, to set boundaries with our community, with the black and especially people from Africa because we raised by the community, by the village. And uh, sometimes I feel like, do I open a business? Or, you know, because some people, they come and they vent here, they tell you their stories. They become so close to you. And most people, they call us and they ask us, should we nominate you as a business owner or a community? <laughs> so uh, we were that close with our community. So this is a very good experience. And then I feel like we were really successful on that one. So my advice is um, when you open a business, try to um, study what kind of area you're going to be, what kind of community is there, and then try to integrate with them first. Uh, don't just be there to make money. That's my, my advice for sure. Amazing, Salam. You know, the, the work that you did during COVID helped families get through it. And that's what we're looking for. You know, in our business category, we thought, you know, as much as we want to see businesses doing well, we want to see businesses doing well and giving back. So thank you so much for the work you did. And to all the other nominees doing great work at their respective businesses. So next up, we actually do have the Community Service Award this time, presented by a good uh, partner of ours, uh, Charles Buchanan. Charles is our event director at the Calgary Black Chambers, and he is the CEO of Technology Helps. Uh, I, you know, when I first heard about the work that Charles was doing, I was like, yes, we need more people doing that kind of work. Charles works helping nonprofit companies get their electronics and technology set up so they can participate online and, and fundraise and do the things that they need to do to grow their ability to help. So Charles, hey, over to you to present the community service category. I'm Charles Buchanan, board member and uh, event director for Calgary Black Chambers. I'm also the founder and chief executive officer of Technology Helps, a social enterprise that's focused on ending technology poverty in a charitable sector and vulnerable communities. Calgary Black Chambers Community Service and Leadership Award recognizes community members who understand the importance of giving back. Volunteering is at the heart of what we do at the Chambers and we hold community support and community involvement as key traits of successful individuals. This award is for an individual who, or who provides service and time to improve our community. These individuals chose to put the community first, making the sacrifices necessary to create real and lasting change. It, for this category, we received numerous uh, nominations. Uh, they're happy to report that there are many people doing great things in our community. However, the top four nominees are as follows. Jean-Claude Munyezamu, Jean-Claude leads Umoja, formerly Soccer Without Boundaries. And when this pandemic hit, through the trust that Jean-Claude and his organization had with the community, they were the first to be called to come to, to the, the community's aid with food security, accessing emergency services such as uh, CERB, getting connected to online learning and providing laptops for work and school. Jean-Claude and his team quickly pivoted and built out programs within days to help the Black community get through the pandemic. Shauna Porter. Shauna has played a pivotal role in organizing and leading protests over the summer. She's the founder of UBPA YYC Black Town Hall and Operations Let's Be a Human. And that's a street level nonprofit serving Calgary's homeless population for over two years. She was remarkable and profound at the City of Calgary Town Hall meeting, calling out systemic racism in our city. 
Adenek Sahili. Adenek is a community worker and black activist, a mother of two young boys. In 2010, she founded Ethiopian Eritrean COVID-19 support group and reached out and sustained hundreds of COVID patients and their families by providing emotional and material support. She's a dedicated volunteer at Ethiopian Evangelical Church in Calgary. Uh, she teaches and counsels the youth, advises parents of teenage kids on how to understand teen emotions and builds a positive communication with them. Adora Wofo. Adora is a founding member of several community organizations with it, such as Calgary Women's March, FemWave, and BLMYYC, where she sits as president. As well, she works with countless other charities such as the Nigerian Canadian Association, Africa Day Festival, Carrie West, Young Women in Power, Culture Days, and, and, and quite a few others. And she's uh, been a keynote speaker, a stakeholder at many events, and has played a very active role in the community around racism, eradication, and leadership. The award for Calgary Black Chambers Community Service and Leadership goes to Jean-Claude Munyezamo and Adanek Sahili. Adani Sahili, uh, a founder and director of Immigrant Outreach Society. As an immigrant, uh, I struggle myself and uh, I am a victim of uh, um, systemic racism. Um, the service structured mainly in the, like, for mainstream culture uh, and uh, there is an attention for mental health uh, services for minority communities. That's where I am uh, in this position. I have been involved in the community the last 10 years and uh, uh, giving back to the community uh, is really indescribable. Um, I got a huge satisfaction and um, often it requires uh, me like uh, to get up and uh, put my boot on and get in, in a medical situation, but at the end of the day it's a very rewarding job. Immigrant Outreach Society has uh, um, more than 45 active and uh, selfless volunteers. We are a voice of uh, minority communities. We advocate for them. Significantly, we play a huge role for uh, frontline workers' uh, rights and we deliver culturally appropriate mental health services. As a director, I lead uh, um, the group. Uh, we mobilize the community. Uh, we engage in uh, different activities, um, like we deliver uh, culturally appropriate mental health services for ethnic minorities. My strength is I am an advocate, I am an activist, um, I never tolerate injustice. I'm involved in, in uh, politics as well and uh, I have a very good influence uh, when it comes to decision making. Uh, my name is Jean-Claude Munyezamu and I'm executive director and founder of Umoja Community Mosaic. Umoja Community Mosaic used to be Soccer Without Boundaries. Uh, that was our names. Uh, we started about 11 years ago and the families that we were working with, they were all in need. Uh, I call it underserved people because we have about people from 49 countries and uh, we have um, about 750 families and growing each time. My inspiration is uh, my story, okay? And also the people of this city of Calgary. When you see how, I call it community ownership. When you give people opportunity to serve and you see how people grow, it's inspirational. I think the, it's, it's a hidden story uh, where our community is just like a giant uh, puzzle and everybody has a piece of it. And uh, this is inspiration to see how something started in community that grows and become a uh, pillar in the community. Reason one, never give up. Um, two, uh, perseverance and keep pushing, changes happen. Uh, we are working in food security, basically, uh, if you see here, we have a food that you cannot find anywhere else. We have black business owners 
who sell this food that you cannot find anywhere else? Then some of these business owners, they are going to cross. So on another hand, those people who used to afford to buy this culturally appropriate food, they lost jobs, they were not able to buy food. One choice they had was to change their diet in order to go to food bank and get whatever they have for them. So what I did is buying food from these businesses and giving food to these people who lost the jobs and who find themselves in need. And also, we started a tutoring program when school went online because these children were already behind. So right now we have nine young people who are tutoring and we have also other volunteers who are working on it. So basically we are working to bring this program to be one of the pillar in Calgary because it's a, I feel that is a human right. We don't need to change people's diet when they lose a job. My strength is um, finding what the people need and getting them to do it by themselves. I call it community ownership. Rather than coming and bring things to people, I sit with people and let them come up with a better way of doing it. Just giving them the tools that they need. That's what I call community ownership. Amazing. Congratulations, Ednech and Jean-Claude. You know, I first came across Jean-Claude's story at the Calgary Foundation, where he was applying for some funding uh, with uh, his soccer program. Uh, now, to see you come so far, Jean-Claude, I'm blown away. I very much would look forward to working with you in the for future. And I know we already have some communications going. Hey, it's awesome. Now, uh, let's, let's talk about our next category, where we're going to be uh, introducing uh, two people. Uh, you know, actually, my boss, Mike Franco, with the Calgary Sports and Entertainment Group, including the Stampeders and the Flames. Uh, recently, we've, we've had some discussions, and we're going to be setting up some new scholarships uh, for uh, you know, our students uh, from the Calgary Flames and Calgary Stampeders. Uh, they've also you know, lent a hand in supporting this event as well. So many thanks to the Calgary Stampeders and, and the Flames. You know, for me personally, when I think about the amount of time the athletes give back. I don't think that there's any other organization that has their athletes giving back as much time as the Calgary St. Peters. You know, they, they send their players to different things, and that's how I really got involved with the Alberta Children's Hospital. Uh, you know, through my uh, introduction to them, uh, just going there before game days, I had the opportunity to volunteer there, and that, that led me into a much, much more broad world of volunteering. So, so many thanks to the Calgary Stampeders for both, you know, showing me um, a lot of opportunity to volunteer and for all the money and, and support that you give back to the community to promote change. So uh, to introduce our sport category, we have a quasi, uh, another great friend of mine that we actually played together. And uh, Mike Franco, um, over to you. Hi, I'm Mike Franco, Vice President of the Calgary Sports and Entertainment Corporation and the Calgary Stampeders. I'd like to extend a great big thank you and congratulations to John Cornish and the entire group that's helping build the Calgary Black Chambers. John, you were a hero to so many people in this city and you brought our fans out of their seat constantly for all the hard work that you put into the game of football. It's amazing to see you continue to do that and continue to be a hero and focused on making this a better place for all citizens. Thank you. Now, I'd like to introduce former Stampeder, Akwazi Antwi, to introduce the sports category. Hello everyone, my name is Akwazi Antwi, and I'm the Fellowship Director for Calgary Black Chambers. I work in the insurance and investment industry, and being part of Calgary Black Chambers is a passion, is a passion project being able to give back to my community and help create a path for the next generation. The award I'm presenting today hits a little bit closer home for me, as sports was a big component of my past life, which is why I'm honored to be presenting the awards for sports and athletics. This award is for an individual who has exemplified dedication, hard work, and passion in creating success in, athle in athletics. Most athletes will attribute their success to a coach or to a supportive individual to believe the dream and help push them to be great. 
The winners for our Sports and Athletic Awards goes to Eddie Richardson and Hakeem Duedu. Eddie is a fixture in the basketball community here in Calgary. He co-founded the Genesis Basketball Program, which has become one of the lead programs in the city. Eddie helps train and develop players that have gone on to play at the next level. Let's all give a warm congratulations for Eddie for the work he's done, he does on the court and the work he does off the court, helping players become impactful members of our community. Our next winner is Hakeem, which is a man I want no problems with. Hakeem is a mixed martial artist who is currently signed to the UFC. Through dedication, hard work, and passion, Hakeem has overcome obstacles to reach the heights of the fighting world. As a rising star, your city, your community is behind you. Let's all give a warm congratulations to these two fine gentlemen. Uh, hey, I'm uh, Eddie Richardson III. I'm the director of basketball at Edge School for Athletes and president of Genesis Basketball. I find my inspiration in the youth, um, supporting the youth in Calgary, but as well as across Western Canada, um, opening opportunities that have never been there for them before, uh, and just laying the groundwork so they can be successful. How did I come up with my career? Uh, I created it, to be honest. You know, I, I found a gap in the market um, and I applied it to with my passion. Uh, my passion is youth and sport and basketball. Um, and I wanted to do my best to create opportunities for myself, but also the community and the kids. So created those opportunities. Uh, what made me successful? Uh, I, my perseverance, my consistency. Um, you know, when doors are closed, I, I want to do my best to open them. Um, uh, and I just stay at it. Uh, and the biggest thing is making sure you're consistent and you work hard and you just don't give up on your goal. Message is, is simple, it's just keep going, keep trying. Um, you know, sport is, it's a, it's a roller coaster. You know, you have some great days, you have some terrible days, you wake up, your body is sore, you can't move. Um, you take losses, you get wins. But again, it's being consistent um, and persevering through those ups and downs. So, you know, just stay at it, stay aggressive, stay focused and stay locked into your goal. Sports is key. Sports is one of those things that is a necessity um, to better youth, adults, uh, and help us learn and grow. Through sport, we're able to play with kids um, on our teams when we're, youth, when we're young that aren't from our backgrounds. Um, and it brings us together. It teaches us about different cultures, different people, um, accents, where they're from, food, um, vulnerabilities, um, things for them that are, are big things for us and little things for them and trying to understand and empathize with what they've gone through. So sport ties us together so much. Great. I'm Akeem Dowdu from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I'm a professional uh, mixed martial artist fighter. You know, I had a, a tough upbringing and uh, I just kind of, um, you know, kind of just found, I found fighting, fighting found me type of thing. I was able to go to a martial arts school to do that as anger management. I went to this place called Mike Miles Muay Thai Kickboxing and uh, yeah, just once I went and just, I didn't stop, you know what I mean? Just, uh, that's how it all began. Hard work, hard work rate, you know what I mean? Always uh, dedicated to my craft. I'd also say uh, I, was, I was very tough, athletic, fast, uh, and a smart fighter. I would say those are those are all traits that uh, definitely got me to where I am now. You know, what drives me, I definitely would say, is just to be successful. You know what I mean? I want to be successful. I want to be uh, wealthy, well off, and uh, provide for my family, you know? Well, you know, if you're just starting, I definitely recommend having a, having a good, solid base, whether that base would be, you know, wrestling, boxing, jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai kickboxing, boxing. It doesn't matter. I definitely recommend having a main base. That's your that's your strong point. Um, you know, get really good at that, and then you know, start evolving to uh, all the other techniques for that. You know, that makes an MMA fighter a good MMA fighter. But I definitely do um, recommend coming from a traditional martial arts background, whatever you know, martial arts you feel uh, that you prefer. But uh, you know, I, I definitely I would recommend that as a person first starting out. Well, you know, it's a type of sport. I think it brings all type of people um, together, you know, whether you're rich, poor, you know, in the middle. Um, I, all races, all religions, I find, come together in this sport. Um, and, it, you know, it, it, keep, it gets people out of trouble. It, it gets people in shape. And, you know, it's, it's, it's entertainment. People, people enjoy it. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I feel like it brings just a lot of happiness and uh, discipline to, to the world.
Amazing. Congratulations, Eddie and Hakeem. You know, uh, coaches like Eddie are, are the things that help people like Hakeem and myself, you know, find, find meaning through sport. I know if it wasn't for my coaches when I was in high school, you know, providing me that structure, you know, my path would have been a lot different. So, you know, thank you to all the coaches. We, we really wanted to recognize both the coaches and the athletes. And, and, you know, luckily enough, UFC was still going over the last year. And Hakeem, uh, keep up the great work. I, I look forward to watching you on pay-per-view soon. So in our next uh, uh, guest, we have David Shepard, uh, the Honorable David Shepard, MLA from Edmonton. Uh, you know, he reached out early on in the Calgary Black Chamber's existence to see if he could help. Um, so, uh, David, uh, you know, thank you very much uh, for, for you know, reaching out. And uh, we wanted to share your words. So here you go. Over to you, David. Hi there. I'm David Shepard, MLA for Edmonton City Center and the official opposition critic for health. You know, black men and women have been making enormous contributions to communities in Alberta for well over a century. From early arrivals like Cowboy John Ware and serial entrepreneur Annie Auntie Saunders, to the exodusters like J.E. Edwards, who settled, helped to settle communities like Amber Valley, Keystone, and Campsie. Teachers like Velma Carter. Violet King, Alberta's first black law graduate and the first black woman in Canada to practice law. Restaurateur Hattie Nelton, who hired young black women so they could afford university education. Mary Burley, who revolutionized social work with marginalized communities in Edmonton. Athletes like Rolly Miles and Johnny Bright. Musicians like Libero Carter and Big Miller. And thousands of others who all worked to support their families and give back to their communities. Who founded churches and schools, groups and organizations to help those in need and indeed to fight for their civil rights against racist laws and discrimination in their communities right here in Alberta. Like Ms. Poston and Lulu Anderson in Edmonton, Charlie Daniels and Ted King in Calgary, and many others who all fought against segregation in their communities at local councils or in court. Because black communities are resilient. You know, 2020 was an incredibly difficult year for many as COVID-19 forced them to experience what it's like to live a life restricted to live in a world surrounded by a constant, invisible, but deadly threat. To live in fear of its impact on their ability to make a living, their freedom of movement, or their and their loved ones' lives and health. But black communities, as long as they've lived on this continent, have always known. And they've always found ways to survive and thrive. Fighting to save and protect the lives of those battered and bruised by the disease of hatred and prejudice. And to upright and transform the system that empower and entrench its spread. And yet others work to inoculate hearts and minds against it. But core to all of their successes has been community. Finding strength in creating spaces to come together, stand together, and fight together. Even when hatred and prejudice strove to drive or force us to be apart. To celebrate all we are and insist and defend that our lives matter. That is the history of the black community in Alberta and around the world. And I know that's the mission of the Calgary Black Chambers and why we're all here tonight. Celebrating and recognizing black excellence in work, in character, in contribution, and in spirit. So I'd like to thank John and all of the team with the Chambers for their work to support, strengthen, and celebrate all corners of the black community in Calgary. Please know you have the support of myself and all of my colleagues as you recognize some incredible black Albertans and continue your work to support others. Congratulations as well to all of the nominees and winners tonight with profound thanks for your contributions to our province. Enjoy your evening. Amazing words, David. We are sort of in a place now where, uh, you know, we, we after the, the the murder of you know the murders of all the, all the people uh, black people across the board uh, you, you know you have people sort of finally listening the, to, to the real impact of, of black people and, and you know here in Calgary and across Canada we're definitely in a place now where um, you know that listening that the 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 receptiveness of companies of people to different uh, 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 different ideas than, than what we're, we're used to. You know, C CIBC talks about diversity. I know a lot of firms are, are taking a firm stance in that diversity is the way forward. 
Um, so I, I think we are absolutely stronger together, David. And so thank you very much for your words. And we'll look forward to uh, you know, making Alberta a better place to live for all people. So our, our next presenter is Wakefield Brewster, uh, who will be, who's going to be presenting a poem called I Can. You know, you can find Brewster uh, on CJSW uh, FM 90.9. Uh, almost every night, you know, his spoken word poetry. Um, honestly, like when I called him up to ask him to participate, he, he almost brought me to tears just in that phone call. Uh, you know, uh, you can find him on almost any kind of media. He is a self-described MC. Wakefield Brewster, everybody. This poem is called, I Can. After two decades of delivery on the MIC, unbelievably, people still asking me, what can you do with poetry? That question used to make me angry. It used to get me hot. Now I tell them, have a seat and ask them how much time they got. For you see, with poetry, I can. Duly danced down those same halls of learning where I once had the yearning to be a well-accomplished human with a 4.0 But my GPA was sadly way far below. I never got the knack of the educational flow. They made me sit still. So I stood still. I can confidently, comfortably cruise into classrooms where I was once coerced to create a captured, cornered mental state so I could clearly create a way to hate my own mind by my educators. They were educators. They formed a form to form my formative years, tainted with intolerance and a tidal wave of tears that sailed all of my dreams away from me. For they likened my self-image with one of stupidity. It was all that I heard and all that I could see. I can now be free. When I was once imprisoned by a mental prism, my errant splay thoughts were like hot colored rocks. Endless ammunition for the slings of possibility, but impossibly, all of my targets eluded me. For I was living in the kingdom of couldn't be me. I couldn't see the lock, so I didn't need the key. And when they finally let me go, they said, you don't know poetry. I can versify being victimized into a valiant victory. Verify that when you vilify, you eventually got to deal with me. The transformation was tremendous. I took the word stupid and I made it stupendous. I began to manhandle the land of language that language in apathetic and anonymous anguish. I did decide to dissect and divide indefinitely, indubitably, what diction was due to me. Stab a psyche with a simile, sometimes slip left of center C so as to step off into a soliloquy. Ailed the English alphabet with an oral, oral atrocity. I can wear the face of mental agility, dispel the myth of dental fragility, and proudly embrace my so-called disability. ADD, ADHD, OCD, PTSD. Now I've made an acronym for maniac out of me, and never once before have I so ever loved M.E. I can turn my inventive imagination into a physical infatuation, not like sugar, not the hard refined, not like sweetener, not the artificial kind. I don't need heroin because I'm a heroine, my own mind. Spent some time with my mentality and what I did find is I can learn. And poetry taught me when the truth is unfurled, I'm the only one man who can change my world so I can do anything. What can I do with poetry? I ask you, why don't you tell me? What could you say? Wakefield Brewster, everybody. You know, like, Wakefield, like, I first came across your work, you know, last year during Black History Month. I'm so happy you agreed to participate in tonight's event. That that just just was was amazing. Thank you for I can. Like like I said, you can check them out on uh, CKSW Radio ninety point nine Wakefield. Beautiful. So, what's our next category? We have the uh, you, you know one of the most uh, uh, you know powerful women, one of the most uh, uh, respected um, figures in. Calgary, Heather Campbell up next. She's going to be presenting our Arts, Media, and Entertainment Award. H Heather, um, you know, it, it has both been a guest 
on our um, one of our speaker series, and she also sits on our scholarship board. You know, she's also um, a police commissioner, as well as working a, in the oil and gas business as well. You know, Heather, I love her. The first time I came across her, is like I just want to you know talk to you going forward. I'm so happy uh, we have the opportunity now through the Calgary Black Chambers to do just that. So Heather, I'll look forward to seeing who is the winner in the arts, media, and entertainment category. Hi, I'm Heather Campbell. I'm a proud member of Calgary Black Chambers, and I'm also on the board of Arts Commons, Calgary's Performing Arts Centre. The value of art to my community work and as a leader in Calgary's art sector is core. I am honoured to have a piece by Jay Sterling, the artist behind Calgary's Black Lives Matter mural, Grace My Home. What am I working on? Too much, but I'll persevere because that's how black women rule every day in the city. The Calgary Black Chambers Arts, Media and Entertainment Award recognizes those who bring color, music, levity and peace to our lives. Black art and culture has driven entertainment for decades and we have a growing culture here in Calgary, which is at the forefront in Canada. Art and culture has the ability to build bridges and our nominees are building the foundation of black culture here in Calgary. This award goes to an individual who uses expression or application of human creative skill and imagination to enrich our community. We have three nominees. The first nominee is Cheryl Fogo. Cheryl is a poet, writer, historian, and an award-winning documentarian, but most of all, she's a storyteller. Award-winning Canadian actor Karen Robinson called Cheryl's book, Pouring Down Rain, Soul Saving. Cheryl has dedicated herself to the voices and histories of our community, and her legacy has inspired so many Black Calgarians and Canadians to greatness. In addition to her extensive volunteer work, on the boards of numerous arts and not-for-profit institutions, she has consulted with dozens of agencies, educational institutions, and organizations about inclusive practices and Black history in Western Canada. Our second nominee is Lanra Ajehi. As an Alberta artist, Lanra Ajehi is an, has a holistic view of what creativity is all about. It has enabled him to work with community-based agencies, government stakeholders, business units and citizens to develop comprehensive artistic ideas, bring about strategic communication on complex subject matter for multiple audiences, and advocate for the role of artists and the contributions that artists make to Alberta. He is the founder, artistic and creative director for the annual Black History Month celebration called Ethnic Festival of Arts and Culture. His My Speak City Speaks to Me, the Calgary edition, is a multimedia platform showcasing stories about individual artists and art organizations within our community. Our third nominee is Marion Ashton. Marion Ashton is passionate about everything she does, especially her grassroots organization, Sankofa Arts and Music Foundation. From supporting families dealing with bullying issues to organizing walkouts to change our city schools, Marion is an advocate for Black youth in the city of Calgary, establishing several firsts for the city, including the first Black youth scholarship for the city. During COVID, Marion has extended her reach to support struggling Calgarians of all ages with food donations, despite the challenges of not having a physical space to organize the same. And the award goes to -da 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 -da, Cheryl Fogo. My name is Cheryl Fogo. I am an author, playwright, filmmaker, and a community historian. I find inspiration uh, in young people. I like to keep myself surrounded by young people. I find inspiration in music. I listen to music every day. I'm very inspired by it. 
I find inspiration in other art forms as well. Um, the, the creative practices are the things that nurture me and I get a lot of inspiration from there. I think finally I would say I find inspiration in the story of my ancestors. One thing I would say for people who want to pursue a creative career that's based in storytelling, whether that's film, theater, books, is that your own story and the things that you care about will make for compelling stories that other people want to see, hear, and read about. So my advice is to look around yourself first before looking outside and tell us the stories that you really care about. I'm very excited that I have a short play in Obsidian Theatre Company's 21 Black Futures project, which will be streaming on CBC Gem later in the month. I think that's something that people will be interested in. It brought together 63 black artists from across the country to tell these stories. And they're all about the, fu about the future. What is, what is the future of blackness? Uh, I'm also working on a book called Mapping Black Calgary from 1880 through 1960. And that is something I'm very excited about as well, kind of in the early stages of it. But those are, those are two projects I have on the go at the moment. I think the characteristic of, of myself, of my being, that has been most helpful for me throughout my career, and I think has paved the way for a lot of the success I've had, is that I have a strong foundation in my family and my heritage. I know who I am. I know who we are. I know why we're here. I know we belong here. And that has really kept me going through the kinds of experiences that can be discouraging for an artist. You know, you do experience lots of rejection. You do experience times where people don't think what you have to offer it matters. Um, luckily, of course, you always find your people. If you, if you look around, you find the people who do believe in what you're doing and what you have to say. But I think early in my career especially, just confidence and and my own personal belief in the validity of the stories that I wanted to tell was the thing that kept me going, uh, putting one foot in front of the other. Um, I'm also incredibly curious. Some people find me uh, maybe a little bit too curious <laughs> sometimes, so I have to learn to, you know, to back off if I'm being too too forward or too interested in somebody else, what somebody else is thinking and doing. But curiosity um, is, is, I think, is a good trait and it has helped me in my storytelling. I didn't want to leave without saying I'm incredibly honored by this award. Thank you. Beautiful. Uh, you know, uh, Cheryl Fogo is one of those people who really makes a difference. I know uh, in the coming weeks, I'm going to be presenting with Sate, uh, Cheryl Fogo's uh, uh, movie about John Ware. Uh, John Ware was uh, one of Calgary and Alberta's first black people. And I, I like to think of him as the first black cowboy in uh, Western Canada. Uh, you know, this, this movie is going to be available to all people and you can view it via the Sate website uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, very much look forward to participating in that. So our next category we have a uh, chucks okafor presenting the medical category chucks was another football friend uh we both played the same position now chucks is a uh, uh he was a former mentor now a, a former mentee of mine now he is the director of our mentorships um i very much uh, look forward to seeing uh, chucks uh, career develop uh chucks over to you Good evening. My name is Chuck Sokafor, and I'm a global real estate advisor at Sotheby's International Realty. I'm also the mentorship director here at the Calgary Black Chambers, and it's an honor of mine to present the inaugural Calgary Black Chambers Medicine Achievement Award. And this award exists to recognize our black doctors and our nurses and our researchers working to make a difference in our city. The Calgary Black Chambers Medicine Achievement Award goes to individuals practicing in the medical field 
working to improve both the lives of their patients, their students, and research in the field as a whole. And importantly, this year includes making the field of medicine more inclusive. And we have two top nominees. Our first nominee is Dr. Morris Canterbury. Dr. Morris Canterbury is a pediatric neurologist at the Alberta Children's Hospital. He's also the assistant professor and a clinical scientist at the Cummings School of Medicine, who specializes in pediatric epilepsy and other pediatric neurological conditions. He has a distinguished position of being a lead scientist and a research lab at the Cummings School of Medicine. Dr. Scanderberry has also been a role model for many medical trainees and recently demonstrated his invaluable leadership in the medical school as he mentored the members and the founders of the Black Medical Students Association of Calgary. Dr. Morris Scanterberry has been a point person for negotiations and provided an advisory role to the leadership at the Cummings School of Medicine. As their leadership embarked in the efforts to fulfill the terms of the call to action made by the Black Medical Students Association of Calgary to address the systematic racism issues at the Cummings Medical School. Dr. Scatterberry has devoted tremendous time and effort into advancing the understanding of the needs and the struggles of the Black professionals in the medical field. He was instrumental in the organization of the Black Physicians in Calgary to form the first Alberta chapter of the Black Physicians of Alberta. Our second nominee is Dr. Wardron Affleck. And Dr. Wardron Affleck is a highly esteemed resident in the child and adolescent psychiatry. Over the last year, Dr. Affleck created history. He founded the first Black Medical Students Association in Alberta, based at the University of Calgary. And the most impactful initiative was the release of the call to action to combat systematic racism within the Cummings School of Medicine. Dr. Affleck's initiative has affected the whole university as a whole, because outside of the Faculty of Medicine, there has been an establishment of the Black Faculty Caucus at the university. Originally, his work has led to the formation of the Black Physicians of Alberta, which is the regional representative for the Black Physicians of Canada. And personally for me, Dr. Affleck was my football coach in high school, and he was instrumental in my development as a running back and as an athlete and as a man as a whole. And he was very fundamental in me getting the opportunity to play football at the high school level and eventually the collegiate level and ultimately the professional level. For that, I'm very grateful. And now it's an honor for me to crown and announce our winner here. And the winners of the inaugural Calgary Black Chambers Medicine Achievement Award are Dr. Morris Scanterberry and Dr. Wardron Affleck. Congratulations, gentlemen. So I am Dr. Morris Scandalberry. I am an epileptologist, and I'm also a pediatric neurologist and a basic neuroscientist at the University of Calgary. My name is Dr. Waldron Affleck. I'm a fifth year psychiatry resident and a subspecialty trainee in child and adolescent psychiatry, and also the chief resident of that program at the University of Calgary. My inspiration comes from my family. It's because of my family that I get up every day and do this kind of work. For my wife and my son, I work to try to make a better world for them every day. That's what drives me, inspires me to get up and do my job every day. I think along with family, uh, I love young people. I love the energy and the drive and the, the dream, dreamer um, characteristics of, of young people. And if I can in some way facilitate those dreams in some small way that's what drives me um, to do my work i think the biggest lesson that we've learned is that you have to start somewhere if you wait for things to happen they won't happen you have to take a first step and begin the process and once you take that first step things will generally snowball from there. We've seen that we found support from people and from areas that we didn't expect. Uh, we've seen that people are willing to participate and willing to work. People working together is way more powerful than individuals working on their own 
and that when you put creative minds together, anything can happen and big things can happen and walls can be moved, doors can be opened. I don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> I've had several mentors at different points in my life. Since meeting Dr. Scantleberry, I feel that my ability to be my best and to do my best has gone up to another level. Having a mentor is also having a friend. It's having a guide. It's having someone who will challenge you at all times. Having someone who cares about you. Having someone that will unselfishly give to you. Give you the support and the knowledge and the direction in which you need to be the best you. What I appreciate about, appreciate about him is that he always tells me the truth, good or bad. Waldron has been, to, to me, a um, gift in my life. Very, very, very intelligent young man. He is a dedicated physician. He's an excellent friend. Um, it's my honor to have the opportunity to be able to teach him and to mentor him. But it's also my honor to have the opportunity to learn from Dr. Affleck and to have his friendship and to watch him grow over the years. Some of the work that I do for the community is, uh, I would say, local at the University of Calgary and some is um, international in the sense that I'm trying to increase access to care in resource poor nations with regards to epilepsy. And so I do work in Barbados and I do work in uh, Trinidad and um, within the Caribbean in general. Um, here, what I'm trying to do is to um, make life a little better for uh, students of color at the, at the university. Um, I'm working with um, leadership to develop mentorship programs for faculty um, to make uh, to make uh, the process for promotion um, a little more fair in that we're trying to um, remove any systemic barriers that may present itself and um, we're working also to increase the diversity initially with regards to um, people of color in um, research, um, in leadership, and um, um, in mentorship programs. Folks, amazing, right? I was maybe told I was using the word amazing too much, but I was blown away by the work uh, Dr. Scandalberry and Dr. Affleck were doing. You, you know, uh, in terms of their, their work aside, you know, the relationship that they've created based off of mentorship is exactly what we're trying to do here at the Calgary Black Chambers. We see the value of mentorship. I know I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have my mentors. Uh, you know, I, I got to give a shout out to uh, my mentor, uh, Dan Crawford, uh, you know, also Jim Davidson for helping me, you know, with a path to get here, helping me navigate the situations that come up, you know, like it, it's, it's so beautiful to see relationships like that. You know, it, it, I love the fact that Dr. Affleck said, you know, um, you know, things are better done together. Walls come down, doors are opened. So I, yeah, I encourage you, if you don't have a mentor or a mentee relationship as it stands, I would very much encourage that. Now, that leads us right into our next category, the youth achievement category. We wanted to have a category where we were recognizing people 30 and below. And uh, no one better than my friend, Greg Clark, who I met at an event where we were networking, same event that I met Michael Lee Hing at. Uh, we came together, we thought, hey, let's do something for the kids. So here's Greg Clark introducing the Youth Excellence category. Thanks, Greg.
Hi everyone, this is Greg Clark. I'm honored to be here today uh, in support of the Calgary Black Chambers. I currently serve as a client executive at FX Innovation, one of the leading digital transformation and cloud migration companies here in Canada. Over the last number of months, I've been working on a number of things um, with regards to establishing better connections within my community and really better understanding myself through the pandemic and all that's been happening across the globe. The Calgary Black Chambers Youth Achievement Award was created to recognize those in the younger generation who are making a difference. This award goes to a young individual under the age of 30 who positively impacted both people their age and the greater community as a whole. The top four nominees are Samar Abraha. Samar was elected and became the first black VP academic ever at the University of Calgary in the spring of 2020. On June 6, 2020, in front of thousands of Calgarians at Olympic Plaza, she was a featured speaker at the Black Lives Matter vigil. She has helped future UFC black medical students by establishing a new entrance process for black students. Deborah Embud. Deborah is a volunteer with the Canadian Club of Calgary. She is the writing and content lead at Trad Magazine. Deborah is also a youth mentor with the Calgary Immigrant Women's Association and an advisory board member at a leading in color. She's presented numerous times on the topic of Black women's rights. Sakurai Mohammed. Sakurai is the president of the Somali Student Association at the University of Calgary, and he is also heavily involved in the Somali Canadian Society of Calgary as both an organizer and community member. He is also an executive on the University of Calgary model United Nations team and was the Secretary General for their Calgary Model United Nations Conference, coordinating thousands, sorry, coordinating hundreds of delegates and dozens of volunteers. Lastly, two world creatives, Tim Indonde, aka Afombom from Cameroon, and Zaire Seely, aka Zaire Inc. from Montreal, established two world creatives with the process of uplifting communities through art and storytelling. The two began to garner recognition and were invited to perform at the 2019 YYC Music Awards, where they won the brand new inspirational Re recording of the year category for their song, Manhood. And the winners are, Samar Abraha and Deborah Embud. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Samara Braha. I'm the Vice President Academic for the Student Union. Uh, I'm also a student at the University of Calgary. I was born and raised as a refugee in Sudan, in Africa, and I have seen my parents struggle to make ends meet, to make their concerns heard and all of that. So it made me realize that I want to live in a world where I, uh, people like me you know, have, have a place where we can voice our concerns openly and have our needs met. When I ran for the VP academic position with the student union, I wasn't sure that I am gonna be, you know, getting the position because there was no one who looked like me and sounded like me in that position before as a black woman. Uh, so, and even when it comes to the collection of race-based data and advocate, the advocacy for race-based data, it was hard at the beginning, but once the conversation, one, once we start the conversation and we're trying to, you know, gather people who are like-minded, uh, it became clear that there is so many opportunities that we can achieve if we get together and we discuss the matters that the things that matters to people. I'm still working in the advocacy uh, toward the collection of race-based data. I draw more atten attention to it, where, where people start to understand that there is a need for the collection of race-based data, and where we know, like when we're trying to frame policies provincially and federally, we have to base it off of. Uh, 
and real statistics and numbers and what people are actually looking for. Uh, I'm also advocating for the inclusive post-secondary education, scholarship, internship opportunity for people, for black people and people of marginalized groups. I want to leave a world where uh, black people, uh, marginalized community, BIPOC community as a whole can have access, equal access to education, healthcare, housing, and all of these services. I want to be a human rights lawyer. Uh, I have already applied to law schools and I have already wrote the LSAT as well. And I have already also met with community leaders, with provincial leaders to discuss human rights issues in, in Canada. Uh, and the discussions was all around the definition of human rights, who has access to education, clean water, healthcare, and all of that, and how we can enhance accessibility and equal opportunity for BIPOC community as a whole. My name is Deborah. Um, I do a few different things, I wear some different hats. Um, at the moment, I'm working in the immigration space. Um, but I also um, am a part of a media startup, um, sort of an online magazine, and so I do editing there, um, and I volunteer as well, and I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, I'm, yeah, a lot of things. I feel like I find my inspiration um, the same place anyone does, I guess. Um, you know, you hear a story about someone doing something um, that makes the world better, or um, even if it's a fictional story or a real story. Um, my background, um, my family is Nigerian, um, and we uh, immigrated here, and so um, I'm inspired by like the story of my family, my dad um, studying really hard and, and getting here. Um, also my faith, um, I'm a Christian, and so um, yeah, I'm definitely inspired by um, the things I, I read, um, and then just people um, in the world, I guess, in general. I don't know if you can ever be sure. Um, I think you're always taking a bit of a gamble in life. Um, I think I definitely weigh probabilities and, and think, is this something that might work out? But there's always an element of chance. Um, I can say, particularly with Trad, which is a media startup for black youth, um, we were pretty confident that it would succeed because we would talk to people, friends of ours, people that we would meet um, in the community, whether we're at events or sports things or in school, and people all kind of had the same um, sense that something like this was needed. Did we know we were going to succeed 100%? Maybe not, but we were pretty sure that there was something special happening. At this point, I'm focusing on my work, I'm focusing on um, TRAD, which is yeah, a big kind of side project. Um, I also volunteer in the community, and so um, I, I mentor um, a immigrant youth, um, and so I'm pretty focused on uh, just seeing that some of her goals that we sort of outlined this past year are achieved. Um, I'm also these days focused on like health, um, just knowing that um, we're in a pandemic, um, I have lots of family members and people that I love who are um, sort of immunocompromised and a little bit more vulnerable and so um, I'm wanting to be as healthy as I can, hoping that they can be as healthy as I can. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm young and so I, I, I'm young but I, when I was younger I think I was even more idealistic in terms of like the long-term impact I want to leave on the world. Um, I think these days what kind of legacy I hope to leave is just um, one of one where I can, I can look back on my life and say I've worked as hard as I could, um, I helped people as much as I could, um, I wasn't necessarily chasing a paycheck so much as passion um, and influence and um, impact basically to make the world better. Um, I'm obviously quite interested in the journalism space. I did my um, undergrad in journalism and communications. Um, and so I've always been a writer. I think that's always something I want to pursue long term. I took a postgraduate certificate in the last year um, in public policy and management. And that was an opportunity to sort of build my CV and um, academic background. But yeah, anyways, the ultimate kind of job I'd love to have is um, probably to always be doing some sort of writing on the side, um, but then also working in the policy landscape. Um, I mentioned I work in immigration and that's a, an area that I find really fascinating and rewarding, um, particularly when it comes to refugees and newcomers. Um, and so, yeah, if I could paint a perfect job, it's wearing a few different hats, I guess, and, and kind of balancing um, and finding a nice, finding that balance, I guess, ultimately. What, what can I say? The future is bright. You know, uh, Samhar and Deborah, like the work that you're doing already, already laying the groundwork for future uh, black Calgarians, future immigrants that find success here in Alberta. Thank you for all that you've done. And I, I, want, I want to say, you know, uh, we had Glenvar Griffith say, these young, young ladies show the future is bright. You know, I, I have put my faith in the next generation. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to mentor them. But like Deborah's saying, she's already mentoring the next, next generation.
So the future truly is bright. So for our last category of the night, this is uh, an award that's very near and dear to my heart. For too long, uh, some people's contributions to our great black community in Calgary have gone unrecognized. No more. With our Lifetime Achievement Award category, we have Clarence Winter presenting. Clarence is our board's uh, oversight director. He is um, able to put into words the things that need to be done so eloquently. I look to him for advice with anything having to do with the Calgary Black Chambers, and the Calgary Black Chambers would not be what it is without Clarence Winter. Clarence, over to you. My name is Clarence Winter. I'm a field technical specialist in the oil and gas industry. I am pleased to present the 2021 Lifetime Achievement Award. The Calgary Black Chambers Lifetime Achievement Award is a special award that is awarded by the CBC Award Adjudication Committee to people who during their lifetimes have made contributions of outstanding philanthropic significance to the community. This award is important to me as a longtime Calgarian. Black culture in this city has come a long way and this award recognizes those who have been formative in the creation of strong black community in Calgary. Our top nominees are Charles Pratt, born in Freetown, Sierra Leone, West Africa. Charles completed his university education in England, obtaining a degree in mechanical engineering prior to moving to Canada to work in the oil and gas industry. Charles worked for a long time for Enerflax and was well known and respected in the industry. Since retiring from there, he has set up his own consultancy. VVC Quality Management System Limited. Charles has had an extensive involvement and has served the community in a number of capacities. He was a member of the Calgary Police Commission serving the maximum term at the time. Being appointed to the commission by the city council in 2006 and retiring in 2012. In addition to the police commission, Charles also served as a director of Calgary Economic Foundation for two years. Mary Tidlund. Mary founded the Mary A. Tidlon Charitable Foundation in 1998. She worked tirelessly for 20 years to raise funds and match donors and volunteers to programs and people in 29 countries. Her previous experience as a business leader and entrepreneur was a basis of for her skills in philanthropy that defined her life. Mary recently wrote and published a book called Memoirs of a Wildcat. Chris Coy. Chris Coy was the first black firefighter in the city of Calgary and has just retired as a captain from the Calgary Fire Department at the beginning of January. Chris had a long, successful and challenging career. He always put in his absolute best, achieved many specialities and certifications and worked in multiple sections of the department over his career. 
he also always strived to make the department more inclusive. And that work continues today. And the winner is Mary Hildon. Congratulations, Mary. Congratulations to the other 2021 nominees. Have a good evening. I think I found uh, my inspiration comes from when I was a kid. I think uh, in the household, the Tidland household that I was raised in, I found inspiration from being raised in a home full of philanthropy. And uh, it's made me believe in people and in what I could do. Uh, my parents instilled that, the courage and the confidence to to do whatever I wanted to do. And that has inspired me. And along with all the people that moved, that have come along with me in anything I've done, that's very inspiring to have that support. So, and I find that also, I know that there's something much bigger than me that's connected to all the work that I do. So those are my methods of inspiration. I travel a lot internationally and when I come back to Calgary, I'm so grateful for the mountains. I play a lot in the mountains, whether I'm skiing or hiking or biking, and I find them very inspiring for me to just settle and get rebooted and so I can go again. So it's been being in Calgary and Canmore and the mountains have been very inspiring for me. My significant contribution nationally and internationally, I think would be the ability this gift I have of connecting people. So I can, I've been able to connect a lot of people from Calgary, whether they're volunteers, whether they're donors, whether they're sponsors, whether they're business people. And I've connected them with people all over the world. We, we worked in 29 different countries and it's just the skill and knack of being able to listen, really listen to people and understand where they're coming from and, and not to get into judgment and being able to connect different cultures, different people, different genders, different races. And I, I would say that that is my biggest accomplishment. Uh, that's, that fills my soul for sure. I think the trust and faith I have in people that they will come from their best place always has been sort of the basis of the success I've had whether that's been in oil and gas or in philanthropy, both sectors in business or any of the businesses I've ever had and the philanthropic side, when you always go to the goodness in people, then things flourish. And I've always been able to stay in that, to be aware definitely of all the different elements that are going on in in a project or in a business or whatever, but it's always about the people and being able to draw out the best in everyone. That seems to be a skill that I have and I'm very grateful that I have. It's, it's created a lot of success. But my message for the next generation would be to believe in yourself and to treat others the way, you no, know, to treat everyone the way you want to be treated. Uh, there's a lot more similarities between all of us than there are differences. And if you remember that and you trust that you can bring that out in yourself and in others, I think that's your, it's always based on relationships, I believe, success is. And I think for the next generation, if you can stay there and believe that and put that into your actions, you will succeed. Amazing. So, Mary Tidland, you know, one thing that she didn't mention was that she was Alberta's first black CEO, and of course she's a woman, so she was uh, both, uh, you know, the first black CEO and the first black woman CEO in Alberta. She ran her own oil and gas company. Uh, you know, Mary, congratulations on all that you've accomplished, the amount of money that you've raised, the amount of people that you've helped, a, a lifetime worth of achievement. Thank you very much. Now, uh, I, I do want to mention uh, one more person, Sharon Cornwall. Sharon Cornwall helped set up the first, truly uh, the first Calgary Black Achievement Awards. Sharon set this up in the 80s. And, you know, she's of an age now that, you know, most of the people she worked with aren't really around anymore. We are hoping to continue the tradition 
the Sharon setup. So I'm proud to announce um, that we will be trying to implement her, um, you know, proud to be black program in the near future. We'll be working alongside, um, you know, different uh, black organizations here in town to help make her dream a reality. As you can see, to wrap up, you know, amazing things are here happening here in Calgary. I want to thank again our sponsors for tonight. CIBC, thank you so much for your support. Our founding sponsors, KPMG and RBC, as well as Calgary Sports and Entertainment Group. These companies have stepped up because they understand the importance of, of building up uh, the capacity and the capabilities of Alberta's and Calgary's uh, black people. We're in a place now where, where we are just on the cusp of really seeing change happen with organizations like Black North, Black Opportunities Fund, working with them, the government providing money for groups like ours and black businesses, change is happening. Of course, we will always reflect back on, on the murder of George Floyd as sort of a turning point, a point in time where people started listening. I think it's so important, especially this Black History Month, that we recognize the responsibility we have to the world and ourselves to show that inclusive strength is a true strength. A force that can vanquish intolerance, radicalism, and hate. People can forget, though, when they say let's celebrate diversity, that what they're saying is let's celebrate difference. There's challenges in this idea. This can become us versus them. And it, can, it can become easy to associate any fear, anxiety, or issue with the other. The only way to break free of this mentality is for Canadians to know and understand the diversity present in all Canadians through relationships with their friends, co-workers, and neighbors. The Calgary Black Chambers is trying to be the place where we can create connections and, and build things together, regardless of the way you look. True relationships must be forged and stories must be exchanged. This is the reason why the Calgary Black Chambers needs to exist right now. We need to change the narrative by empowering our younger people of color and tightening the nick of black professionals already overcoming as you saw here tonight, overcoming the obstacles there in front of them. The Calgary Black, mission, uh, Black Chamber's mission is to support and mentor students and be a voice for those without one and Black professionals without one too. I thank you all so much for coming tonight and I look forward to working with you all to foster real diversity and making Calgary the best city for Black people to live and work in Canada. I'll end with a quote from Martin Luther King. An individual has not started living until they can rise above the narrow confines of their individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. So a special thanks tonight. Just a few more thanks, folks. Uh, you know, my wife, who did all the production tonight, obviously, uh, you know, doing video production in this day and age, it's, it's tough. And I applaud her for all the work that she's done uh, to make this event go as smoothly as it has. A special shout out for, to my Calgary Black Chambers board and all of our volunteers. Your contributions to tonight's video made it so warm. Like you guys all are working so hard to make this city better. And I applaud you and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for believing in the mission of the Black Chambers. I've given a shout out to our sponsors, but I never want to forget the media. Thank you so much to the Calgary Sun and the Calgary Herald for sharing our message on the front page, to the Global and CTV for getting our message out there and, you know, really providing us a platform to, to share our story with the world. Lastly, I want to thank all of you out there who are working to make a change that we didn't recognize you tonight. I believe that we will recognize you someday. So keep working, keep believing that you can make a difference, and we will see that change make Calgary a better place for everybody. So, to close us out tonight, we have the musical talents of Gary Martin. Gary and I met uh, last year around this time, and I knew I needed to include him in whatever we did going forward. Uh, Gary is uh, from the United States. He has shaken hands with Martin Luther King. 
Um, his music speaks for itself. Uh, you know, feel free to stick around and enjoy the musical talents of Gary Martin. Thank you all for coming tonight. All the best and enjoy Black History Month. Welcome everyone. I hope we've had a great evening with the Black Chamber and the Black History Month celebrations. As an African American and now Canadian citizens, I feel honored to be a part of this. And the few songs that I will leave out of the African American playbook is for everyone to think and everyone to celebrate our differences and our similarities. The first song I'm going to do, and all the songs I'm going to play, I do not own them or the rights to them. I'm only using them to express our thanks and our understanding for Black History Month. This one particular song that I'm going to start with is by Harold Melville and the Blue Notes featuring Teddy Pendergrass. I think as African, as African North Americans, we need to sit back, or black people, if you choose, we need to sit back and listen to some of the songs of the past, and not just religious songs, some of the songs of the past, and understand where we are and where we need to be. Wake up, everybody, no more sleeping in bed, no more backward thinking, time for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There is so much hatred, war, and poverty. Bring up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. Maybe then they listen to what you're out to say. Cause the world wants to come and up, and the world is in their head. When you teach the children, teach them the very best you can. The world won't get no better if we just let it be. The world won't get no better when I change it more, just you and me. who suffer and who catch all the ill. They don't have so very long before the judgment day. Won't you make them happy before they pass away? Rig up all the buildings, time to build the new land. I know we can do it if we all in the end. The only thing we have to do is put it in our minds. Surely things will work out, they do it every time. The world won't get no better if we just let it be. The world won't get no better, we gotta change it now.
just far too many of you died. You know we've got to find a way to bring some love here today. And Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. Someone who has a negative vibe And when you talk to them They only leave you aside But they really don't have No 
where to go. Now ask them where they go. They don't know. We won't let nothing hold us back. Gotta get ourselves together. Gotta polish up our act. Well, you ever been held down before? I know you refuse to be held down any longer. part of this. The black history in Calgary will keep moving and keep moving forward. I'm hoping that this year, 2021, that the black people in Alberta stand up to be recognized and to participate. I would like to congratulate all of the nominees tonight, including my student, my best bud, and my little brother, Ryan Perez. He set up this and made sure that I, I could come out and do my recording and be human. I know most of you are perf perfected musicians, but I'm only human. I'm going to make mistakes and have fun and do what I do. But most of all, I play for all of you. I hope in all my most precious dreams that we as black people in Canada finally step up and enjoy the Canadian way of life that is prepared for everyone. May you all have a great year. God bless. Ryan, go ahead, brother. Oh, you guys are still here? Hey, go on. Chill out, grab yourselves a drink, enjoy the rest of Black History Month, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.